I define myself as a cyborg because um, I am a cybernetic organism. Biologically, I am merged with technology or with cybernetics, uh, but also because I feel that technology is part of my identity. So I, I feel that I am technology. So uh, I am psychologically united to cybernetics and also biologically united to cybernetics. So I identify as a cybernetic organism. How would it feel to control objects with your mind, or hear colors, or maybe even live forever? Well, if you want to find out, all you have to do is become a cyborg. How would being part machine affect us? Would it cause a greater divide between the rich and the poor? And is this the next step in human evolution? This is what if. Wait, to call this a what if is a bit misleading. It's more of a when if because cyborgs are already among us. And according to the world's first cyborg, Neil Harbison, they're not going anywhere. We'll be able to decide which organs or senses we want to have as a species and then whenever someone that has modified him or herself uh, decides to have children, then we might see the birth of uh, babies with the organs or senses that their parents had. So I'm sure we are at the very critical moment in this century where we'll start seeing this happening. It's already happening by merging with technology, but whenever we do this biologically, it will be a, a much stronger change. And that's not the only change we can expect with this technology. Artificial intelligence is becoming more advanced by the day. Within the next 50 years, AI will be replacing most of our jobs. They'll simply be better at them than we are. Elon Musk thinks that for humans to avoid being reduced to the usefulness of a house cat, we'll need to augment ourselves to compete with robots. Although, according to our resident cyborg, Neil, instead of fighting the inevitable robot takeover, we should embrace it. But before we get to that, let's start making you a cyborg. The first decision you'll need to make is what kind of changes do you want to make to your body? Do you want cybernetic eyes that allow you to see in black and white or sepia? What about a chip in your hand that starts your car for you? Or if you want to get crazy, you could change your entire bone structure to be carbon fiber. The possibilities are practically endless. When Neil Harbison decided to become a cyborg, he wanted to view the world in a way it had never been seen before. Well, I have an antenna implanted in my head that allows me to extend my perception of color. So the antenna allows me to sense from infrared to ultraviolets. The vibrations of color enter the antenna and then the vibration of the color goes inside my skull. So I feel color, I feel the vibrations of color. Not only the visual spectrum, but the infrareds and ultraviolets. Then there's um, also internet connection, so I can also receive colors from other parts of the world. So there's people that can send colors to my head. Or I can connect to NASA's International Space Station and then I can sense colors from space. So the new organ has internet connection, which I use to extend my perception beyond my body. Human augmentation will allow us to be better at almost anything that we do now, both physically and mentally. Imagine having mechanical arms. You'd be shooting three-pointers more consistently than Steph Curry. You'd have a harder punch than Mike Tyson and a faster serve than Serena Williams. That's because your arms will be programmed to be more consistent and just overall better than human components could ever be. With two bionic arms, you'd be one of the greatest athletes ever to live. Although if everyone had these arms, sports might be more boring. But don't forget, these arms can be used for several things. Most importantly, they may help us outwork robots in factories and other lines of work. Many of us are afraid of the inevitable takeover of artificial intelligence, but maybe we're just watching too many science fiction movies. 
Um, I don't think we should be scared of AI. I mean, if, if AI ever becomes more intelligent than humans, the most intelligent thing will be that they will probably, AI will probably ignore us. It won't uh, either. Many people are scared that AI will kill us. Wow. Or killing us is something very human. So killing humans is something that we already do. So that wouldn't be more intelligent than, than humans. So if AI ever becomes more intelligent than humans, I don't think they'll, they'll, it will be dangerous. If you really want to see how this whole rise of the machines thing will play out, maybe you can modify yourself to become immortal. If you have a failing body part, you could simply replace it with a mechanical one. And after it fails, you could replace it again and again, extending your life far past its natural expiry date. But at this point, you may barely be human. The only organic part of you that might remain could be your mind. Is it too late to go back? Yeah, unfortunately, it is. Once you become a cyborg, there's no turning back. Even if you don't get any invasive surgery. Let's say you get an ear enhancement that allows you to hear as well as a bat. If it somehow got damaged or fell out of your ear, you wouldn't be able to hear at all. Why? Because your brain would have adapted to hearing with your enhancement. Once it's gone, you wouldn't know how to hear without it. Oh, and don't forget about the chance of your body parts being hacked and then losing control of them. Not only that, but who will be able to get these enhancements? Some people fear that they would only go to the rich, causing further class divide in our society. But what if it's the complete opposite? Many people say that rich people will become cyborgs, but it's not happening. It's the poor people that are becoming cyborgs. Everyone that I know that has merged with technology is not rich. They are students uh, or they, like myself, I, I did it. I had no money. I did it with, with friends and really, uh, I'm not rich. If you look at rich people are not cyborgs, uh, at least I don't know. I can't think of anyone rich becoming a cyborg. It's, People who are not afraid of merging with technology that are becoming cyborgs. And that has nothing to do with money. You can become a cyborg for, with 20 cents. In 20 cents you can create an a infrared with a bit of um, with a motor and this you can install it at the back of your head and then you'll have retroception. You can sense what's behind you. Wow. It's not a, a thing about money to gain a sense. I think in most cases you can also have chips that uh, your cat or dog has, you can have it implanted and it's not, uh, it's not, it's not about money, at least now. Instead of focusing on the potential negative consequences of becoming cyborgs, maybe we should start looking on the bright side. As Neil Harbison explains, cybernetic modifications could help us save the planet. What we now call diversity has nothing to do with the diversity we will see in society in the next few decades. So we will see a diversity of species. So we will be able to decide which organs and senses we want to have. And this will create a diversity uh, that we, uh, we have never experienced. So you'll meet people with organs and senses that have nothing to do with yours. And they'll have perception of reality that is different from yours. But I think that's, a thing that we should all start focusing on. We need to start changing ourselves instead of changing the planet. We've been a species that for thousands of years have been changing the planet and designing the planet in order to live better. And this hasn't been any good. We've been destroying the planet this way. Instead of creating light bulbs, we should have focused in creating night vision so that we don't spend so much energy creating artificial light. Wow. Uh, or if we could control our own temperature and find a way of controlling our own temperature, instead of creating heaters and air conditionings, this would be much better for the planet. We wouldn't change the temperature of the planet, we would change our own temperature. So we need, we need to focus on designing ourselves if we want to continue living in the planet without destroying it. And also whenever we do this, we'll be able to, to also live better because uh, we have not been able to adapt ourselves in our own planet so i think we need to start focusing on designing ourselves now if we really want to reduce our impact on the planet why don't we leave our bodies behind and upload our brains to the cloud well 
because that sounds like a story for another What If.